Gray County. This program is brought to you by NBA League Pass. More dunks, more slams, more to love, live in HD. NBA League Pass, part of the Rogers Super Sports Pack. Welcome to Her Story, The Journey to Winning a Seat at the Table. I'm your host, Mary Jane Murray. And this program is a series of conversations with inspirational women with amazing stories to share. And stories are a tapestry of lifelong experiences and events. Let's explore the journey. My guest today is Kelly Ma, and she is a floral artist, a creative entrepreneur, and she is the owner and creator of The Mat and The Easel. Now, Kelly is a, a retired employee of the city of Owen Sound, so that was one career path, but she is also a woman of many interests and many talents. Now, she is good with numbers. That was her job. The other part of her life is that she explored step dancing for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And also, she has her educational assistant um, a credentials. And um, she has also developed her yoga practice. And most importantly, she rides a motorcycle. How cool is that? <laughs> now, in 2008, she took painting lessons from um, um, Peter John Reed. No, yes, I got that right. Peter John yes. Reed. <laughs> and, and through that experience, she has... Um, developed her skills and her talents and she shares that with with other people in the community through her art classes and her workshops and basically what she's doing is teaching the language and the technique of painting and we often see very accomplished women in leadership roles but leadership can emerge at any stage and at any age and in many forms. And this is Kelly's journey. Welcome Kelly and thank you for taking the time to spend with us today. Thanks Mary Jane, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, there are so many interests and you've had quite a, a, an eclectic collection of of interests and skills and talents that you have developed along the way. But let's reflect back on your early years and the influences that surrounded you at that time. Absolutely. Um, I come from a family that's very deep rooted in arts and culture. Um, my grandfather, who was born and raised in England, was a clockmaker, and he, when they came over to Canada, was the only clockmaker in Canada that actually made the wooden mechanisms himself. So one of my grandpa's clocks is actually in the Museum of Science in Ottawa. So. From there, he delved into um, watercolor painting and was a cabinet maker as well. My father and brother both were cabinet makers and my sister's a musician. My mom loved to sing. So all growing up, I was immersed in that without even knowing that that was a thing. That was just my lifestyle, how I grew up. So it's wonderful now reflecting on when I sit and paint, I have a box of my grandpa's paints that sit in my paint studio, my brother's furniture, my father's furniture, I'm surrounded. And I think that culture just fills my soul so much. So that's kind of, you know, part of my building blocks that, that got me launched into this sort of creative preneur lifestyle that I have now. When, when you were growing up, were you dabbling in art and painting and photography uh, as, a, as a younger person? I, I, yes, definitely. All my life I've been very um, colorful and creative. Um, I didn't paint though. I honestly didn't start painting with acrylics until 2008. 
Um, but I did lots of other stuff. I made jewelry, I knit, I sew, I, cre I crochet, I just, I drew pictures for my kids to color and I always was doing something creative and always, all my hobbies always turned into some little mini like career where I was like, oh, I'm going to make earrings and sell them. So I always um, made my hobbies turn into money earning little projects. So it was sort of that entrepreneurial that was in me, that's always been in me, I guess, that just kind of became something that I created a business plan for myself to say, okay, I want a healthy environment for now. I don't want to keep saying, okay, in nine years, I can retire. In eight years, I can retire. I wanted to actually live my fulfilled, happy, colorful life now. So I created a business plan and took my yoga teacher training and I like self-educated myself through lots of courses and things to create the mat and the easel where I could teach painting lessons and teach yoga lessons. And it's really about providing a place of social connectivity as well as learning and, and sort of feeding your soul with creativity. It's that safe place to land where people know that they are it's a win-win for everybody when you come for a paint lesson or a yoga class with me. So I love that whole, like, as it built within me, so it comes together now in this career shift that I made. And it's been almost four years now that I've been in this, did this career shift, which has been wonderful. Well, I can certainly see the sunshine in your face as you talk about that it's just you know the vibrancy that are come that come from you in terms of the excitement of the journey that you're on now but i just want to but i see two things here one is i see this very vibrant creative side but your career was in mathematics and numbers which is almost a dichotomy here of of uh, right brain left brain happening well, and that's very true, but I think while I was earning that income to support myself as a single mom with three kids, that was what paid the bills and kept the roof overhead. And then I started teaching step dancing. So that filled me with joy to be around, um, to just be able to encourage other people to um, do something fun and engaging in their life. So I taught step dancing for 14 years and then transitioned in that time to when I started te uh, learning how to paint, then that became something that kind of overcame. I really wanted to immerse myself more in that. And let's face it, at some point, like my heel was sore or this was sore. And I'm like, I was painting more and more. And a lot of my students were all going off to college and university and getting married and having kids. And I'm like, okay, I think this is, it's time for me to shift. So I shifted into the painting and then that really consumed me to make that next shift. So yeah, for 20 years, I talked toilets and numbers and billing and collections, but that can be so wearing and when you're such a creative so to be able to create a career shift that's such a healthy one for me that was an easy transition it was scary and I certainly have to acknowledge my courage and vulnerability and how brave I was but it also was so important to me that I knew I had to make that happen. I had to make the shift sooner than later. And I'm so glad that I did. And I encourage anyone, woman or man, like anyone, if you're unhappy with your career choice, nowadays you just shift gears. Like, like no education is a bad education. So if you can shift gears to something that fills your soul and makes you happy and you can earn a, an income, then it's worth investigating. And there's so much help out there for that. Well, what I'm seeing uh, and hearing from you is that you were listening to your inner voice. Your inner voice was saying, yeah. now is the time. And yeah. so that pivotal moment that came about listening to your inner voice, as opposed to listening to other voices, 
that were around you saying, I need to take care of myself. Yes. And, this, and this is a journey. As you said, you had, it was scary. It took mm-hmm. courage. You were very brave. But I also hear the word business plan uh, several yeah. times in the conversation. So it wasn't just a spontaneous leap out to the universe. You actually talk about a business plan. So there is some planning that goes along with this. Absolutely. It certainly wasn't something that I could do willy nilly. I was walking away from like benefits and things like that. I had to be very practical with my with my business plan to make something that could work for me. And there's lots of training out there, the Business Enterprise Center and through the county, I did some training courses and really got um, well educated to make good decisions and to be confident in those decisions and to feel empowered in those decisions. And, and there was lots of scary days where I'm like, oh my God. And I knew people were saying, can you believe what she just did? And I'm like, but I had to, I was so compelled to have, to live a better life for me that that was so important. And, and I knew that if it didn't work out, it wasn't the end of the world. Like I still have all these skill sets, right? So it's still going to be okay, no matter what. So it was worth the, it was worth the, um, the leap of faith and trusting in myself. And, and, and I think finding my voice, like, I think every day we work and I can speak as a woman, but I think every day we have to work at finding our voice. Some, for some people, it comes very easy. It, I don't think it was easy for me at all. I think I had to work really hard and there was lots of sleepless nights, but every day my business plan still to this day evolves and changes and grows. Like I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of change. So I embrace change and I, and I think, okay, what am I going to learn next? Or what am I going to teach next? Or what's my next yoga flow going to be? And, and, you know, how can I encourage this particular student or that student? Or what technique should we learn now? So I love that it's constantly evolving. And that kind of speaks a lot for me and my personality as well, too. So it's quite a win-win for myself as well. Well, what I, what I hear you saying is that um, a life is a journey and that we need to think about the other you know, skills and talents that we have within us and value them and then start to explore them. So what you did was you anchored in a career with benefits and a steady income and then explored this other creative side uh, for yourself so that... Um, you could find a place where you could marry the two um, and then separate them. Yes. (laughs) Separate them. And then then move forward. But what I'm hearing from you is that uh, it's not stagnant. You're not in one, just because you left one place and you've moved into another, another place, it's still not stagnant for you. You're still growing. You're still exploring. Absolutely. You're still looking at what other aspects are out there, what other challenges are. And so this is this is a transition to a new environment, which brings you joy. I can just see it all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the end of your journey. Not, yeah, absolutely. Not at all. Um, like I said, my business plan evolves all the time to the point that I now have um, a traveling mobile unit. I have a motor home um, that I call Miss Daisy and I travel and paint and I go to campsites, but I go to people's homes and teach paint lessons as I travel. And I sit out in nature and paint. Um, I love traveling. I think I could just keep going coast to coast in Canada and be so thrilled because we have such a beautiful country that we live in right here. Um, so camping to me, it has turned into that, that traveling yogi and traveling artist and my sweet little English Springer Spaniel, Sibella, she comes traveling with me. And um, that's another part of my business plan that kind of launched off 
um, off that side to be able to take my um, skill set and go and do a retreat for someone and teach yoga and painting for people where they do, if they can't come to me I could come to them um, that sort of thing I love I love that there's always and and I, being inspired by other people too kind of inspires me but if I can inspire um, other people to just even to try something new like come and and try a paint class or um, try a yoga class and see if it's for you a lot of people when it comes to creativity say oh I can't paint or I can't draw or I'm not very stretchy but you don't need to be any of those things you need to try right you just need to show up and carve that time out for yourself to take care of yourself whether like I think we hold the bar so high for ourselves that or and you know and sometimes it's somebody way back when said oh that's a terrible painting or you can't draw a stick person so that there frames your beliefs and it's not true I think if you if you feel passionate about something it's worth it's worth investigating at least you know and I love to be able to empower people and say, feel good about yourself. Like, I hope that that the people come that want to learn and learn from me, leave with a heart full of, of laughter and encouragement and that tiny little tidbit that they might have walked away with where they went, wow, I didn't know how to mix that color and now I do. Or look at me, I, I've got this piece of art. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I, I did it, you know, and that's what I think I'm about as far as um, teaching and, and encouraging people to grow and to just try something new, whether it's pottery or whatever, like try something new and get off the couch. And you know what I mean? Like that sort of thing, I think is really important to me. Well, I, I think that what you've done um, by inspiring people to try new things, and I'm, I'm afraid that you were uh, describing me um, <laughs> when it came to uh, feeling uh, quite hesitant to put paint on to a canvas. But anyway, um, mm -hmm. you, are, you, were, you are working away at, at my uh, anxiety here <laughs> to try. Um, but I think what, what's happened here is you have married two things. You have married yoga and painting because they're both contemplative. Mm -hmm. they're, they're both a time when you're in another, another space, another headspace. Um, when you're painting, you can, or creating something, um, I, I sew, I so mm -hmm. when I'm creating something, I um, am in an entirely different headspace. And I, mm -hmm. everything in the world falls, falls away. And I'm mm -hmm. just working on my project and, and thinking about it and encouraging myself and loving what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. The same with yoga. Yoga is contemplative. It's calming mm -hmm. down. It's giving you um, time and space to just be your inner self mm -hmm. and I have a little quote here from you <laughs> it says people need quality time to themselves and painting or being creative and yoga do the same thing they definitely do they bring for and I can speak for myself that when I sit down behind the easel, that's my meditation. Like if I've been super busy and I've had to um, run around and do other stuff and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't get behind the easel today. That's my meditation. So it's important for me to make that time to land behind the easel. And, and that's, that does my, my mental check-in, right? Landing on the mat. Um, we don't always have the time and and it's easy to um like try something once and think okay i'm going to do that every day and then the next day you don't and then and then you don't but carving that time out and saying okay um for sure every tuesday i'm going to kelly's to paint so even if i don't paint all week i know every tuesday i'm going to paint and you show up and 
and you build that confidence within the community of the other students and with my support and and then suddenly you're looking forward to that Tuesday because of that community and that sense of social connectivity and the conversations it's like the the quilting bee right when you're sitting around the table and you're creating and you're inspiring and that's the sort of thing that I think is so important that that I provide more than just painting lessons. It's really about that social connectivity that we really need. And I mean, let's face it, it's pretty obvious after the last couple of years that that that's been a missing element and it's a critical element. So in those times where we did have to shut down, like being able to do this and be on Zoom on the computer like my students just went, we have to keep painting. We have to stay together as a group. So Zoom it was. And even for my technically challenged ones, I did everything I could to get them to stay connected. And that was so important to me that we stay connected and that we reach out. And we have all these beautiful friendships that have developed from that and that empower each other. Like we can be sitting around the table painting and someone can say, oh, what dog groomer do you use? Or who's a good roofer? Or And all that networks for each other. And we share skills and knowledge between each other in that in that creative time so i think it's so much more than that and i love being a part of it and i love providing um the safe place to land you know whether it's the mat or or my kitchen table or down at georgian bay center of the arts like people coming in there for classes um there, it's a beautiful safe place to land where you can feel empowered and confident right to build that confidence well, I, I think mentorship is really important, and, and this is mm -hmm. what you're describing. When you are encouraging your students, when you are building that sense of community, building their confidence, giving yeah. them the, the space to make mistakes, and, and, oh, here's a technique on how to fix that, or how to change that, or, um, so uh, it isn't a mistake, what is it? A happy accident, I think. Right. They call it. right. Yeah, Bob Ross would call it happy accidents. I like to say, honestly, when people are like so scared to lay the paint, I'm like, just do it. It's just paint. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. There's no rules here. This is, it's just and you say, I don't have a technique. You sure you do. As soon as you lay paint, there's your technique. And then you start learning and growing and trying something new and building that confidence and then you're like look what i've done so many of my students that have come to me are now selling their art and getting commissions and it's like how exciting to empower yourself and what a beautiful tip of the hat for someone to reach out and say would you paint a picture of my dog or would you paint me a picture of the bruce trail and and i watch my students growing and developing their own niche and 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 techniques and it's just so wonderful to be a part of it and i created that by creating the mat and the easel and creating that safe place to land to learn these things so i just love playing a role in that i've got some of my younger students that have had their art hanging at the artist co-op in the youth show and selling their work there which is so wonderful to empower them and encourage them to build a body of work um, so starting from as young like my students start from eight and up but empowering them so feels so good to me to be able to bring laughter to the table, because that's one thing that's so important to me. I'm, I'm always playful and silly and making up silly words and terms and, and laughter to me is the biggest and best medication anyone can take. So we have a little moth Thoris that I created in paint class. So every time I'd have a funny word that people would laugh about, I'd write it in the moth Thoris. So every once in a while, we open the moth Thoris up and we read some of my silly words and we giggle and laugh. And when someone else uses a good term, I'm like, oh, that's going in the moth Thoris. So we joke my name. Um, we play off puns off my last name all the time. And I, I love that. I think that's part of the humor that I like to bring to the table and into life. Life. Um, I think we've all had to survive tragedy. 
um, and having some place where um, you can kind of forget all that stuff and feel good about yourself and and fill your heart with laughter and and compassion and joy. I mean, it's such a win win thing, you know. Well, you've certainly given us some some wonderful <laughs> words of wisdom and encouragement. And what I what I'm seeing and hearing from you is that um, the mentorship that you that you give to others. I usually ask the question, how does your leadership affect others? But I can see how your leadership affects others and, and going forward. Because when you bring so much enthusiasm to the work that you're doing, um, I, have, I have another little quote here um, <laughs> that I think pretty much sums up what uh, we've been talking about. And that is, happy, happy just pops out of art attacks. And <laughs> so... Um, I, I, I think the inspiration that you're bringing to, to women and to your students, um, um, both male and female, um, mm -hmm. is that art is emotional. Art, art brings out the best in all of us, and then we can put on a canvas or um, a, create a pottery or, or so... Uh, that you can actually find a joy in that. But I do have one, we're coming down to, to wrapping up the show, but I do have, okay. I usually ask our guests, what brings you joy? But I, we already know the answer to that. <laughs> so the other, question, <laughs> the other question is, do you have a saying that propels you through the day particularly if it's a hard time or if it's a joyful time? A saying. I don't know that I have one particular saying. I like to think that my superpower is making people laugh and empowering, empowering people. So, I mean, honestly, what you see is what you get. Like, I try and be live like walk my walk and talk my talk. I try sincerely to do that. So if I'm having a down day, which we all do, like that's when I'll put on some fun music and I'll get up and I'll move around and I'll dance or I'll pull out my ukulele and sing one of my favorite songs or I'll just do something that's going to fill my heart or I'll reach out and message my kids or my close friends so like I've got such a beautiful network around me of family and friends that I'm so blessed and I know how blessed I am so that's really important to me to recognize that and I think for other people, find your superpower and really celebrate it. Celebrate yourself every day. Treat yourself something kind. Thank you so much, Kelly. We're <laughs> running out of time. Thank has you, Mary Jane. Such an amazing <laughs> story to share with us. Thank you so much. You're and so please, welcome. please join us next time on Her Story, The Journey to Winning a Seat at the Table. Thank you. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Hi, I'm David Shearman, host of Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. Join me for my next show, where my guest will be Bill Walker, MPP for Bruce Gray Own Sound. Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. I don't belong here. Brianna, Roger, they don't belong here. But yet here we are, all of us, because I loved you.